and we're live. Hello, everybody. I have uh, Cynthia Rothrock here on our live stream today, and uh, very excited to talk to uh, talk to you, Cynthia, about we're live. Hello, everybody. The uh, latest developments and whatever you're have, uh, uh, whatever you're Cynthia working Rothrock on here on our live stream today, and uh, and uh, very excited. And also ask some uh, questions from the audience. Uh, I think we're gonna what? have. We've got at least a few already. So um, okay. But uh, I figured first thing, just let's just you know, we did the interview a couple months ago. Um, what's new in uh, in your career that you can talk about? Oh, what's new? Well, um, when did we last talk? <laughs> I gotta try to remember. Yeah. Was that Germany filming, or was that after that? I think it was. I think it might have been before the filming because it's been oh, a couple okay. months now. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I filmed a movie uh, in Germany called The Last Kumite and uh, finished that Recording up. Recording in progress. Sorry. Okay. And and now I'm really into a full um, pre-production of my film. So from now, uh, pretty much until October 30th, when we start shooting Black Creek, it's a lot of work, a lot of work uh, getting everything together on that. So what do you fill my days? <laughs> so your role you know, you're doing a heavy producing role, I'm sure, with this. What is what is the producing function? What, what, what is the producer's function on a film like yours? Well, I have a partner that's uh, my producer as well. So there's two of us, and we work very closely with the line producer. And uh, basically, our role, what we're doing is just making sure uh, that uh, the script is where it should be. Yesterday, we did our first Zoom table read, uh, reading through the script and getting familiar with everybody and their character. You know, now if we need to do some changes or tweaks. So we're doing that. Uh, one of my roles is, is uh, you know, getting the components together, like your crew, who you want for your crew. We already have our director, you know, getting the lighting, the camera is all that set up uh also uh contracts for people uh wardrobe uh i'm taking a very very uh dominant uh point in in the wardrobe making sure everybody looks the way i perceive how they should look in this movie i didn't want to like hire someone and then like i've been in films before where you're just they bring the rack of clothes in and then here take this take this so i want everybody's clothes fitted and really to look the part and that's a lot of work a lot of, a lot more work than you think and uh just doing like a lot of research uh so every day we're you know on the computer doing something uh something involved in the film is wardrobe something that you've always taken an interest in with film well you know um I, I've been in a lot of movies where I didn't like the wardrobe <laughs> and I didn't have a say in it because when I got there, you're like, OK, this is what we got, you know, and it doesn't fit right or you can't fight in it. And you know how it is. You have the wrong pair of pants and you can't lift your leg up, you know, or you have the wrong shoes on and uh, they don't feel right. You get blisters. So just it's very important for me and for all the people that's in it is to uh, look, feel that they look really good. They look like that character. And also, you know, that they're able to fight in it before getting on set and then saying, oh, no, these shoes are like too small. I, I have a personal question to ask you. Uh, <laughs> well, what, whenever I buy new pants, um, one of the important uh, parts of buying new pants is going into the dressing room and practicing kicks in the pants that I buy. Is this something that you do, too? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually just was in a, a, a store the other day and uh, went to a, like a Western store and I was trying on some pants and luckily, you know, they had some that were like uh, era set for the 1800s, you know, you just got to scuff them up so they don't look new, but they were stretchy. And I was like, this is awesome, you know, because yeah, because, you know, I kick high, I have to do like a lot of like spinning things and everything. And when your crotch is too tight, that no matter what, that leg does not want to go up. Yeah, so, that, uh, it could be a real downer when you're doing fight scenes. If the yeah, the wardrobe people fit. look at me funny because I'm, you know, the, the room is, the mirror is outside and you have the big room and I'm throwing kicks and they're <laughs> looking like, what? Oh, okay, now I need to try this, try them with the boots on. <laughs> yeah, I think every, every good martial artist who starts a, a clothing store should put a kicking paddle inside the changing room because that's yeah. the only way to really know if those pants are going to fit well remember when chuck norris came out with those kicking jeans right he was the yeah. first one to come out with right. something like that they had that 
gusset crotch the, the, the or diamond, something. Diamond, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. That's a big deal. I mean, I I think it was only maybe ten years ago when men's pants started having more stretch material. It was very difficult to find pants that you could kick in. So every all the pants that I had were just UFO uh, <laughs> UFO. Um, you know these big <laughs> poofy parachute pants. But then when you actually had pants that fit, did they? What was the wardrobe like? in hong kong did they was were the clothes usually fitted appropriately and were you able to move properly in them um it depends on on what film it was yeah i didn't have any problem i did have you know a couple scenes when i did lady reporter where corey you wanted me to wear a skirt you know and heels uh so that was a little different but uh although it was hard and complicated and uh very easy to twist your ankle like doing those moves i thought it was pretty creative though for him at that time to have a woman fight like in a skirt and rip part of it off and use it so uh so um i'm I'm trying to think i think not so much hong kong movies i think i tried on the stuff and i was able to kick in it sometimes it happened more with american movies you know where they'd come in and they'd They'd say, "Here's your pants." You go, "I can't fight in those." Well, that's all we have, you know. <laughs> well, what did Jeez. I, what did I wear today to the set? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess they're just the uh, the wardrobe department probably doesn't know martial arts in America the way they might. In yeah, America. yeah, and it, and you know, it's not only that, but it's like I think like back when I was doing movies, you know, in the the nineties here, like I wore the same black stretch pants all the time because I could, I could move, I could do every, everything in them. It's funny when I look, look back now. And then there's some, you know, where I have worn those baggy balloon pants, you know, and then you get on screen and you look like you're this big. <laughs> yeah. They're not, they're not, they don't, they're not exactly timeless pants, I guess, uh, when you look at them. Yeah. <laughs> well, so in our interview, we, we didn't really speak much about your American work. I thought this would be a good chance to talk about some of your American productions. You did talk about how the production model was different, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, a lot of your career was in America. Um, I think that yeah. a lot of the audience probably knows your American work very well. Um, one question from uh, Sidman7225. He asked uh, what it was like working with Leo Fong on Fight to Win. Oh, well, <laughs> Fight to Win. Uh, which one was that? Was I think I, I might have worked with him on... Heel on... Choi is in it, uh, and uh, Richard Norton's in it, too. And you guys fight along... You guys fight at a swimming pool at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually was... Uh, we were... I think it was that the movie George Chung did? Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, well, yeah, it was interesting because um, we were just like playing around. We were, didn't even realize it was like a, a real movie, you know. Um, it, it, that was, I think, that was right before I went to Hong Kong, and uh, <laughs> I don't remember too much about it. I think I might have blocked that one out a bit, oh. but uh it was fun obviously working with George and and Richard, and you know we knew nothing at that time, so. Uh, yeah, it probably shows. <laughs> well, you you did you did your scorpion kick. I think you made contact with uh, with the fellow that you were fighting. You did a scorpion kick in that. I remember that. Um, okay. And so, if this was before Hong Kong, I guess you had no context for what it meant to fight without undercranking. You just had to yeah. go as fast as you could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I didn't know anything about filming at that point. You know, so. Uh, it was more like fun for me. I was, I was like, I wasn't even really thinking, wow, we're really making a movie, you know, we're just doing some moves and acting. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know if that was even actually going to get out there or not. Did you know Richard? I did, one, I did another one with Leo Fong too. I, I'm trying to think though. I thought it was the same one. Uh, is that the one where Bernie Pock was the stunt man? That I don't know. Okay. Did you know Richard before working on that film? Um, did I know him then? You know what? That's a good question. I thought the first time, you know, I thought the first time I met uh, Richard was at Shanghai Express. Mm -hmm. So maybe that was shot after, after. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know the year? I, I, there's a couple of films I tend to forget about. I think Fight to Win was nine, was 85 and Millionaire's Express was 87, I think. So 
Uh, well, I, I kind of recall, I, I knew Richard, you know, I knew him when we did Fight to Win, because I remember us joking around on the set. So, whew, I, yeah, you know, good, good, good question, because I always thought we met at, uh, at Shanghai Express. Mm. Well, one that definitely came after Shanghai Express, this is from uh, Alexis Mazanti6929, uh, asks about Manhattan Chase and working with uh, Lauren Avedon and uh, choreography by Steve Tartaglia, who also was a Hong Kong stuntman for a long time, too. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> you're picking out all the good ones, guys. <laughs> um, that one was, yeah, working with Godfrey Ho. Um, no, wait, no, no, wait, Manhattan Chase. That, that was the one, I think, with uh, uh, oh, the girl from the TV show, Dana... You know who I'm talking about? No, I don't. Yeah, and Chase. I don't, you know, there's yeah. that's you're asking me all the ones that I I really that's didn't pay too much attention to. Um, putting you on the spot. Manhattan Chase. I I want to know is that a Godfrey? Does anybody out there know? Was I think that, that was a Godfrey? God. I think that was a Godfrey Home movie. It was 2000. The year was 2000. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I remember we uh, this... we shot it in Manhattan, and that was fun. Yeah. Steve Tartaglia, uh, yeah. I think, is the villain in it as well. Yeah, you know what? I, I, it, it was kind of weird because you're doing an American movie, but still doing it like Hong Kong version. You know, like you didn't really have the whole script, you know, and Godfrey was kind of telling us what to do. And I just remember I was really excited about that because we, we were staying in Soho in, uh, in New York. And I was like, ah, I get to spend, I think it was a very short shoot, maybe three weeks, you know, mm -hmm. spend all that time in, uh, in New York. So that was fun for me. And I just, I remember, I don't remember that much about the story, but I remember I made some really good friends from there that are still friends of mine today. That's what I remember about it. <laughs> Were there any, um, aside from China O'Brien, that was an American film, um, were, there any, were there other memorable American films that you worked on that you look back upon uh, with good memories? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, The Martial Laws 1 and 2, uh, the, those were really great. And, you know, I was still really new, you know, pretty much to filming then. Uh, then we shot, uh, what else? Uh, well, some of the later ones, you know, the martial art kid, love that movie, uh, shot a Christmas movie called, uh, Santa's summer home. And I really liked that. Uh, we didn't fight in it, but he had action stars and the tagline was even the toughest people enjoy Christmas. So that was kind of like the direction. I gotta, ask, I gotta ask about that one. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, did you guys know that, uh, we would be expecting fight scenes from a, you have, a, you have the Expendables size cast of yeah, action stars. We did. Yeah, we had, we had all action stars. And, uh, you know, they sent me the script. And originally they wanted me to play the part of uh, the part uh, Kathy Long played, that I think she was the wife of uh, um, Gary, uh, Gary, right? Gary Daniels. And I couldn't do it. I had a conflict, right? But I, I really wanted to do it because I love Christmas. Christmas is my favorite holiday. And I was so excited to do a Christmas movie. So I remember sitting there with my daughter reading the script and saying, gosh, you know, I really would have loved to play Mrs. Claus. And she started laughing at me like, you know, oh, mom, you know, you're, you know, you're such a nerd, Mrs. Claus. So anyway, my schedule cleared up and I called the director back and I said, I can do it. And they said, oh, we already cast that. He goes, but you could play Mrs. Claus. And I went, yes, yes. So I was so excited. Uh, and then when I found out that there was no action in it, uh, I was still happy because it was such a cute little Christmas movie, but I wanted him on the ending credits to have all of us do fighting movements. You know, I said, that would be so awesome, but he never did it. I don't know why. If I was the director, I would have done that just so people would have saw the action. It wasn't in the movie, but, you know, doing it at the end. And I, I think probably he was on a really shoestring budget. I think we shot that movie in three days. Which is insane, isn't it? Three days. And I remember when he called me as the first movie I did for him and he said three days and I went, oh my God. And he said, Cynthia, this is a luxury. Only I shoot my films in two days. So I thought this is going to be horrible. Uh, I'm going to look horrible. The lighting is going to be horrible because they're not going to have time to light anybody. You know, it was one of, one of the best movies for lighting. He really had it down. He picked a location while people were doing one scene, the, they were lighting the next one. And it, it, he, he did it in three days, which really impressed me. I guess if you don't have action scenes, um, 
it's possible. Yeah, oh, but and, and you know, with him, like you really, ha if you you didn't know your lines, he would not be too happy because that would take up time, and there yeah. wasn't any room to 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 do a, a two takes. You know, if you did more than two takes, oh boy, forget right, it. Right, right, right. Uh, but it was cute. I I really uh, I really like that one. Uh, you know, and I think that's just because of the the Christmas in me. I like watching you know those Hallmark Christmas shows. Right. Was there uh, what was the impetus for casting a martial art cast in a Christmas movie? I don't know. Uh, I think he just said he. I guess he. You know, he's an action fan. He liked us, but he didn't have an action movie. Probably like you said, it would take too long to shoot the action and. Um, he he just said like he thought it was pretty cool to say the toughest people still enjoy, love Christmas, you know. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> uh, and cool. I remember Santa Claus, Mister Claus, is way older than me, right? And and I was like, oh, okay, is that is that going to work? Because I we I really didn't want to get dressed up like like you know an, an old Mrs. Claus. He goes, yeah, sure. Why can't like Santa have a young hot wife? <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> why not yeah um colin squire 7020 asks um for your thoughts on china o'brien and why you think it's become a cult classic um yeah asking... you know yeah china o'brien was uh like again pretty pretty new for us as acting um we shot no retreat no surrender and that was in english and then this was our other one but the difficult well the thing that was exciting for us is that robert klaus was directing it you know directed you know the bruce lee movies thought he was like a, an iconic uh director to us and um we were shooting it in utah and it was interesting though because we had script one and two and we shot both those movies in six weeks and we'd be shooting like the first one and then they'd go robert klaus would go hey let's do the scene in the office since we're here in China O'Brien part two and nobody even looked at two. You know, you're usually looking at the lines you're going to do the day before you're familiar with other scenes, but you know, you're not looking at the second script because we haven't even studied it. Oh, it doesn't matter. Who cares? You know, it's like, you know, and, and we're like, okay, we'll just do that. So uh, it was, um, it was a, a fun movie because it, it was in English. Uh, we had some of the Hong Kong stunt guys there. So you had a little bit of the Hong Kong flavor. Uh, it was uh, a lot of people got hurt on that movie. Um, one of, I remember the the special effects guy got killed on that movie. Oh no, what happened? Tell, tell us about that. What uh, yeah, we were, uh, he was putting a, a he was gonna do it like an explosion or something and something backfired and it it blew up in his uh lap and uh the helicopter came down took him and he passed away it was horrible it was never in like a situation like that before and after kind of the mood for the whole set was uh was not too good for finishing it because they wouldn't even let us like ride in a truck then you know then the you know, fred weintraub was a producer he was really concerned about our safety then after that but yeah i think um a lot of people don't know that, but uh, wow. yeah, I broke my finger <laughs> on it. Yeah, I mean, oh, and when when uh, when Robert Klaus directed, do do you think that he picked up maybe some of the Hong Kong flavor in his directing and the way that he ran shoots? Uh, not to what I was accustomed to. I was accustomed to Corey Yoon, the way Corey Yoon shoots, right? Uh. Robert Klaus was more of a American director, I guess I could say, not so much like the Hong Kong. Uh, he, uh, we wanted to shoot the fight scenes the way we shot them in Hong Kong. And he didn't want it that way. He goes, no, he I remember him kept saying, no, oh, Bruce Lee didn't shoot like this. We're not gonna shoot like that. So what he meant by that is he would do, he would do the whole fight scene without any cuts and angles, just like, like wanna shoot it all the way through. You know, and we were used to going in for close ups and, you know, takes. So uh, a lot of times when you're doing like you're doing a, a scene that has like, you know, 20, 25 moves in it, not all of them are going to be correct. You know, and we wanted them to be correct, but it was like he didn't care. He was just like, no, let's just shoot the whole thing. And he kept he kept saying, I remember this is the way Bruce Lee shot. But I don't know. I don't know if Bruce Lee shot like that. It didn't look like it, but I I don't know. Who knows? Because I you know I didn't know I didn't know how Bruce Lee that's, shot. That's interesting, isn't it? Because you know when you look at Enter the Dragon, um, I think some of the tournament scenes, yeah, maybe they were shot like that. But then the scene in the underground, 
um, it's not shot like that. I mean, that's shot like kind of a mix of Hong Kong and Japanese yeah. style. And that that seems like a, a scene where Bruce was just running things. I could be totally wrong. This is just my hypothesis. Yeah. But my thought was that Bruce didn't like the coverage style, that he liked the Hong Kong. And it's kind of, a, again, it's kind of this Japanese mix. He was always trying oh. to do kind of this Japanese, you know, stars yeah. in the center. But then all the choreography is sort of comes around yeah. him like a like a galaxy, you know? I will bet, I would bet, you know, I'm just, just guessing because I didn't know Bruce Lee, but, uh, you know, working with Jackie Chan, Mong Hoi, Yun Bu, you know, when they're doing action, they're pretty much in charge of what they're doing. So I'm sure he was in charge of all the action and uh, Robert was just following along. And I think maybe this was the time from say, oh, well, Bruce Lee isn't here. You know, we have Cynthia and Richard Norton that they, they're real, they're new at it. They're not going to tell me what to do. So you go like, I can control everybody and tell them like how I want, how I want it shot. So maybe that was you know some kind of a uh, uh an idea of the way he sh he wanted to shoot that mm. like that but nice. we did end up doing some shots because it was golden harvest and golden harvest was like no we have to come in you know they like like seeing that foot really hit the face you know and, and things like that oh interesting so they came in and actually shot some inserts on top of the coverage style shooting that you already did uh i think that who uh i'm thinking uh i'm trying to think someone probably was there from the Hong Kong and probably said, yeah, we need these shots. We need these shots. I know the stuntmen wanted to do it. And like in Hong Kong, you would do the whole scene, right? I'm not saying you wouldn't, you would do it, but then you'd go back and do maybe eight moves and you'd come in like different angles for it. And then up to the editor, how he wants to put it. But usually you wouldn't just do one camera, one shot, and then that's it. You know, we're keeping it like that. And who knows, maybe because it was such a, a short shoot doing two movies, you know, in, in six weeks. Hmm. Yeah, a, um, it reminds me of uh, doing you know music videos, and there would be Disney execs there who would demand certain shots be inserted, and also you know hearing about um, Power Rangers and whatnot, and um, yeah, the uh, uh, the the producer in Golden Harvest wanting to get these extra shots, did they did they expect that there would be uh like a hong kong version or did they expect that just to be edited into this version that would be the international version well you know it's interesting they had two stunt people they had one that was working that robert klaus was working with uh nigel his name was nigel and then we had a couple of jackie chan's stunt team there so they both had different ways of the way they wanted to do it the way they wanted to shoot it you know um i think I think he was probably getting, if I had to guess that he was getting notes to say, no, we need to cover this, like the fights a little bit more. You Interesting. Know? And did he, uh, did he seem receptive to that Hong Kong style with the inserts and whatnot? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, 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 but when we would try to put in something, I just remember him saying, Bruce Lee didn't shoot like that. <laughs> he kept saying that. I remember uh -huh. that a lot, but you know, what's interesting is that I did a movie called Irresistible Force. Uh, with Stacy Keach, and this was this this was a really weird situation because uh, Kevin Hooks, who was a very known director, was directing it, and he was so excited to do this action picture. And it was at the time, you know, this was like I would, if I have to guess, I'd say around '92, that action on TV was like really bad. And CBS was saying, we can't have, uh, they were telling Kevin's notes, we can't have her kick to the head. Kicking to the head is bad. And he's going, I have this girl that can do all these kicks and she can't kick to the head and no blood. They didn't want any blood. And he ended up, he ended up just shooting it saying, no, I'm not going to do that. Right. I'm going to shoot it the way I want to shoot it. And then when it came out, uh, it was supposed to be a TV series. Uh, CBS just buried it. You know, they, uh, and, and it was short. It's not as long as the other ones. And Kevin was saying, you know, this is going to be so good that they'll well, let me shoot more once I get to L.A. And they were really like kind of pissed off at him. And because, you know, we were kicking the head and doing all kinds of martial arts stuff. But can you imagine like doing an action movie with no high kicks only to the body and yeah. no blood, you know, so you're beating the guy and then <laughs> there's no blood. It was just a very weird, weird time, you know, and it was kind of disappointing for us because we were all hoping that would have went into a TV series. Yeah, that was the Power Rangers era too. When and you watch Power Rangers, Koichi would have to make the because you couldn't kick to the head in Power Rangers either in the American in the American fights anyway. Yeah. Uh, because uh, well, for whatever reason, they decided that this was a, a 
this was a, this is bad. <laughs> don't hit any, don't hit people in the face. Um, I know it was crazy. It was like, oh, if you watch a martial art movie, you're going to go out and beat up people. You know, yeah. that's what the story was is that it, it created violence. I mean, wow, can you imagine if they saw what's what we're what we're filming today and yeah. what everybody's seeing? I mean, it's insane. Like yeah. how it was like that. Just you know what? Yeah, you know, twenty five years ago. <laughs> well, I remember in in around that time period, TVs got small enough so that kids had TVs in their rooms. And throughout the 80s, you didn't have a TV in your room because they were too expensive. But then suddenly you could put one in your room. So then there was programming for kids after school that they would watch alone. So there's there might have been some concerns on the part of producers where they were saying, well, okay, if we're showing this to kids and the parents are going to want to know like what their kids are watching, if they find out that we're that we're kicking people in the head. I mean, this is a thing that was sort of at the same time as the ESRB ratings and video games. Mm -hmm. It was a strange time, 92 to 94. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of embarrassing quotes from that time period. I mean, I did movies and, it, and the, like PM Entertainment was doing all the movies then and they had a lot of like stunts. They were known for their big car crashes, mm -hmm. stunts and fight scenes. But I think just because it was a TV series, you know, and they, it was a different, uh, different way of thinking. Right. Did you notice any other shifts at that time regarding, or really any time when you noticed that certain uh rules about violence were changing and it affected your action and what you were able to do on screen um uh, you know that's the only time i really found that it was an effect is is shooting irresistible force yeah other independent film companies they were just you know doing whatever they wanted to do but uh, mm. uh no i mean you know now we see things a lot more gory a lot more you know uh <laughs> like crazy bloody and and stuff you know uh, but uh no it was just sort of like, like a gradual uh you know uh progression how things just started getting a little bit more gruesome and you know I'm for me I'm a fan I like that kind of stuff you know I'm you like do. Yellowstone yeah I love that I love oh, okay. I, I just love that you know uh it, it's it's very I like the wow factor when I see something a scene and go oh, wow you know mm -hmm. like like in the in that the prequel you know that the uh one scene with the with the the nuns oh they i don't know if you saw that the prequel the yellowstone i mean it's like shocking and uh so my my film black creek is a little bit like that we have some like some really tough shocking scenes and i just want to do a movie that i would like and that i would watch and um you know, I kind of geared it on, 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 you know, watching those, those kind of Westerns like Yellowstone. Mm. Have you seen uh, Bone Tomahawk? Uh, yes, I have. What did you think of I that have violence? I Kurt Russell, right? Yeah, what'd you think of that violence? Yeah, I, <laughs> that's pretty violent too, you know? I mean, I, and I'm also thinking of, uh, 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 what are the, I mean, like, what was it? I think it was Kevin Sorbo did that one. Remember, it was like a gladiator type movie, hmm. 300. Oh, he was in 300? Was yeah. that it? I don't know. I didn't know he was in I think it was, it, and that's the first time I've really saw it. I'd seen a movie that was like, oh, uh, you know, other than like a slasher Freddy Krueger mm -hmm. thing. I remember that. And I remember the fighting was like really, really brutal. You know, <laughs> I, I like to be going like, oh, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> I, I can't stand it. I, I just feel it too, too closely in my bones. You don't feel that when you, I mean, do you like feeling that? Yeah. I do like feeling that. Huh. I do. I, I, I like it. I like it. I like to get like either I want to feel that or something makes me laugh out loud, right. like a funny movie, you know, if I'm just watching it and it's like, oh, ho hum, but like yeah. things that really excite me in one way or another, either that way or being extremely funny. They're the kind of movies that that I gravitate to. And I guess yeah. that's why <laughs> I like extreme adventure. Yeah. I like that. I like that adrenaline. I like that that shock. I like that. Uh, fear of uh facing your fears i guess oh okay i mean is that that's why you you scuba dive and you do a lot of you know yeah you're kind of you're kind of out there in the world a lot uh doing your own adventures i mean is this has have you always been like that um no because you know when of course when i was a kid i just did things like with my dad but okay so now we go into the competition area and during that whole time uh, I would say for about probably 
<laughs> 10 years, all I focused on was martial art competitions. Practice, 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 practice. That's all I did. Uh, then when I went to professional competition, you know, that is all I did. I didn't do any kind of sport at all because I was like, oh, if I go scam, I break my leg. You know, I don't want to put myself in any danger. Uh, then when I retired from competition and then uh, I started doing a little bit more like, hey, I want to hike up to Everest, you know, and I was like, wow, I really like that challenge of it. And then um, uh, then when I had my daughter, I had my daughter in 99, I, I only did like two movies pretty much in about that 10 year span uh, because I didn't want to be away from my daughter. Most of my films were out of the country and I, I didn't want to take her with me and I didn't want to do a film if I couldn't take her with me. But I did start doing the adventure trips then you know, gave me something to do. And I think that's like probably, I would say, you know, around 2000, I started really uh, looking for trips that uh, challenged me, that were a challenge and that kind of gave me that adrenaline rush. Mm, I see. Yeah, the, um, the I, I had an employee as well. I was asking her why she enjoyed uh, Slender Man and these, you know, these really crazy horror films that i hate them um i i don't know maybe i'm weak i don't feel very invigorated after this i just i just want to avoid it do you i <laughs> i love horror films i do that's probably one of my favorite genre of films but they have to be really really scary i think the first one i ever remember seeing was the exorcist mm. it scared the heck out of me you know uh but i like i said i like movies that either I think about it, I talk about it, say, hey, did you see this movie? You know, like even like, you know, uh, The Kingsman. Mm. Remember the first Kingsman, that opening scene in the church, that fight? I was like, oh, I love this. I love it. Mm. You know, I love I love that movie because to me it, it was different. It was <clears throat> shocking, you know, brilliant choreography, uh, you know, so, so I just, I think I, I look for that and, and, and probably almost everything I do, that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of, kind of always been a little strange person out of the box. <laughs> kind of. <person. laughs> uh, Jackson Nguyen asks, uh, during your Hong Kong days, did you have any side hustles as an action actor? Um, did you have yeah. to do any jobs on the side to pay bills? No, I, I didn't. I just, uh, when I, w you know, was in Hong Kong, uh, because uh, be before I did movies, I was teaching martial arts in my school. So that's what I did for a living. And, you know, we were competing professionally, but we never made the big money. I remember my dad always used to say, why didn't you get into tennis or something? Because the most I've ever won was $125 for Grand Champion, you know. Uh, so then when I did movies, I was actually getting paid pretty good. You know, back then it was e easy, you know, to live on. Like, I think I was getting $1,500 a week, you know, and I was like, woohoo, you know, this is like great for me. And uh, no, I, I never had to do it. And then when I, I came back, uh, I was still teaching martial arts, you know, uh, and then uh, even today now, like I do seminars, I do seminars, I do appearances, I do, uh, you know, doing my own movie. <laughs> But uh, no, no, I didn't. I was able to. And, you know, plus when I was in Hong Kong, you know, they paid for my hotel, you know, uh, so I didn't have to pay for a place to stay. That was all part of the contract. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like, I was I was very grateful. I, I mean, to me, it was like, wow, I love doing this fighting and um, getting paid for it. You know, how how great is that? And, and it was funny because when I did my first movie, Yes, Madam, I thought I would just do one movie and that would be it. I never really thought I would have a career in film or I never really like strove to say, yeah, I want to be a big action star. I was just like, wow, this is a new experience. This is going to be so much fun to be in a martial art movie and maybe I'll be on a poster, you know? And after we did Yes, Madam, uh, it was uh, a huge success. And then that's when I got a contract from Golden Harvest. So I was like, Okay, this because I just uh, fin I just retired from competition because I had that goal. I wanted to retire number one, and I did that for five years. And then I said, okay, time to to move on. And it just sort of came in my path. You know, I really feel that you know I'm following the right path. I'm supposed to be living this life for. So, Lee Kindler asks, "What's Fred Williamson like?" Oh, I love Fred. Fred is so great. Uh, 
we're still friends today. And, uh, you know, for such a big guy, football player and stuff, he's like a big teddy bear. He's so nice to work with and uh, he's so easygoing. He's very funny. He's a very funny man. Uh, I just came back uh, uh, not that long ago. He, ha he hosts a celebrity uh, golf tournament for charity. And I played in that and uh, it's just so awesome that he, you know, he has a big heart. He's very, very uh, giving back. Uh, we have some more questions coming in. Um, let's see, uh, JJ Hayden asks, uh, I've got to ask about Korean stuff. JJ Hayden knows Korean stuff really well. Uh, he wants to know what it was like working with uh, Che Jong Il. Uh, that that was in Prince of the Sun. I believe so. We're gonna double yeah. check that. But I... right, is that who is that? Is that yeah? I think the 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 because I knew him as a different name. Yes, but, Prince of the uh, Sun. That was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was great. Uh, it was really fun to work with him. And I I remember especially you know we had a very difficult scene where we were fighting on these pillars that range from three feet to twenty five feet. And very complicated, uh, you know, coordination. And, you know, it's different. Like you could do, like, I remember we were practicing, they put like a little uh, tape like this and they'd say, okay, do a bunch of kicks and stay on that tape. Mm. And you're going, oh yeah, okay, I could do that. And then you get up 25 feet and then you're like, your body doesn't want to move. It's like, even though you have a little bit more space, but uh, we were wired on that. And I remember, uh, you know, in Hong Kong, when you're wired, this is how they do it. You know, you're up there 25 feet fighting and you have a, a wire around you and you have st two stuntmen holding that wire. So what happened is they weren't paying attention to our fight scene and he went to jump and fight me and uh, he slipped off of the pillar and they didn't pull him like almost like you like rappelling and rock climbing. And he slid all the way down with his back hitting against the pillar and he got really hurt like during that scene it was really 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 Jeez. rough you know and that's why i say you know like <laughs> when you're doing hong kong movies it's so dangerous i mean there's so many accidents as you know like from jackie chan that's all real it's not that happened to jackie chan it happens to everybody like doing hong kong movies uh but uh, i remember yeah that he he was not too happy about that but he was a, a excellent excellent uh, um person to fight when you're on a platform like that or on a, on a catwalk like that um do you get that kind of fear that motivates you that you're talking about how you you like being scared do you like that kind of being scared and does that push you uh i like it when it's done and i did it and i go wow that looked great i mean during that time uh yeah you know what it's funny i never thought of it like that but uh yeah i mean like you have the you know for all these stunts you know like you're nervous you're running in and out of the bathroom because you're scared <laughs> you know you you get up there your heart is going like this you know but you know it's how i looked at it it's part of the job this is what your job is and this is what you have to do and i would do it and then i'd come out like you know most of the time not hurt and i'd go wow oh, that was so awesome and then you'd see it on screen it looked like a brilliant move you know and you'd be like when's the next one when's the next one but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, maybe that, you know, what's a good question. Maybe that started my adrenaline thing is doing <laughs> all those, those crazy stunts in Hong Kong. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe you kind of have a uh, sort of PTSD that demands that you now find it's kind of like coming back from war. Maybe I, I hate to joke about PTSD, but maybe there's some truth to that where I, yeah, I don't know. You know what, to me, I always thought it was just, uh, uh uh challenging and once uh like the first time i i bungee i was in new zealand and that's where it was originated so i was like well i have to go off the sydney bridge you know mm. <laughs> this is the place where it was i was so nervous i couldn't sleep the night before but the minute i jumped off the platform i was just in like euphoria it was just i wasn't scared at all it was just leading up to it and that's what always happens it's leading up to it until you do it you know and, and and it's weird because when i was competing it was like that too i'd always get really nervous before competition i'd be thinking of my moves in my head i wouldn't talk to anybody i wouldn't be joking around i would just be total focus into what i was doing and then once i started it all the nerves went away hmm. 
you know, I felt like I was in the moment. I was really fighting someone. I was doing the weapons, whatever, you know, I was doing. And then it's such, maybe it's the euphoria that comes after it, that you know you've done it. You've done something challenging, hard, and well. I wonder, I wonder what that does to us. Maybe, I don't know if it's neurological. Uh, is there some kind of dopamine that hits you when you, you go through you go through the trial, you succeed, and then does that now build this sort of expectation where it's like, well, if you want to succeed again, you got to go through this thing again? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, I did some whitewater rafting in New Zealand, and it was the highest rapid you could commercially go off. I was really nervous about it. And <clears throat> my biggest fear, one of my fears in life was being in a raft and getting it turned over and you're underneath it because someone told me they almost drowned that way. And um, when we did this, we, we were coming over, I was in the front and I felt it and I knew we were going under. And it was kind of weird, you know, it, it's like you have some air on top. And I think it's like anything, if you're in a dangerous situation, you can't panic because that's when trouble comes in. And, you know, you have air to breathe, you're in this churning washing machine. And then, you know, you just got to pull yourself out of it and then you go floating down the river, you know. Um, I think it's it's you know learning like how to, how to be in control I guess mm -hmm. you know and and it's not always easy you know because some of these things you know your nerves get to you but uh, uh, I don't know I, I just really 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 like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So do you think do you think that your um, do do you think then that uh, your 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 proving grounds I guess you could say. Was that from your competition days or was it from your Hong Kong days? Like at what point? Did no, you... I think anything challenging came from my competition days. It all started there, you know, because I always challenged myself. Um, you know, I competed undefeated for five years and that's been over a hundred, hundred times, you know, well, well over a hundred times uh, winning. And I would just get nervous that, you know, someone's going to beat me. So I would go to China to study. I went to mainland China in 1982 when nobody could even hardly get into that. I went to Taiwan. I was in Hong Kong. I just kept challenging myself to be better, to be better, to be better. And I, and I, and I think it, that's probably what started it, you know, that you're, you're just trying the best you can, uh, because obviously, you know, you want you want to win, you know, and whether it's like winning a competition or winning the fact that you have this fear of going off this cliff in a raft, you know, that, you know, you can do it, just be calm and, you know, know yeah. your safety. Was there a moment in particular when, um, I mean, I have a just a, a story when I was doing a film, I was doing a feature film, Death Grip, and there was a moment two or three days in production where the entire, like two thirds of the crew left. and. I thought, okay, this is the moment where I could just cancel the whole shoot or I could go on and push forward and just get this thing done. Um, and it, and I saw an abyss in my head, but it looked like an abyss opened on the ground and I could uh, jump in and see what happens with this movie, or I could just like back up and, and go home and take, you know, I dumped my entire life savings into this. I could still take some back. And that was a moment when I jumped into the abyss that made me. Um, was there a moment like that in your competition days, was there a moment where you felt like something made you? Um, no, I, I it was in the, but now I had it in the Hong Kong days, mm. you know, filming because sometimes I got really hurt. Uh, sometimes I uh, could have been very, uh, that could have killed me in some of the situations. And then I would go, oh, this is maybe my last one. I can't do another one because they're going to kill me, you know? and I would heal and then I'd see the film on screen and then I'd go, okay, what's the next one? You know, so I went through that a lot, you know, where, uh, you know, you, you get, you could just get beat up so much and, you know, you thought, wow, I, I could have had my face burned off in that one scene, you know, and you go, maybe, uh, maybe uh, I shouldn't do that. Like, you, you know, you say, but then again, you know, it, it's almost kind of like, um, I think when I was first learning martial arts, I wanted to quit. I didn't like it. Actually, I was 13. I was the only girl in the class. And my instructor said a big speech and typical of the speech on quitters are losers, you know? So maybe that kind of stuck with me. I can't quit anything, you know, because you lose. And I think that, you know, uh, 
went on through my whole life. One of the things, you know, I mean, I remember it distinctly. So it's kind of interesting to think of it in terms of those events, because, you know, when you have an opportunity like the one that you had where you go to Hong Kong, I think a lot of people who would have gone to Hong Kong, I'm not blowing smoke, but a lot of people would have gone through that. And on that first injury, they would have said, I'm going to go back to America where it's safe and it's easy yeah. to do this stuff. Yeah. Do you, I mean. Well, I've seen people come over and wouldn't do this stuff. Yeah. You know, they just said, no, I'm not going to do that stunt. It's dangerous. You know, and obviously in Hong Kong, they wanted the main actors to do it. But if they didn't want to do it, then they would get a double. Yeah. But that person probably wouldn't get offered another movie again. I see. I see. I mean, maybe a lot of people don't care, but there was for you, it was seeing the product, though, that made the difference. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, ju I just loved filming. I, I loved being in that situation. You know, um, I liked the fighting. I liked the weapons. You know, I, I, I liked it. It was hard. I mean, some days we shot more than 24 hours, you know, and that's when we were sh we were shooting um, Magic Crystal. You know, we had a lot of injuries on that just because everybody is so tired. You know, Richard Norton has a big scar on his head from a sword that <laughs> split him open from me. From you, uh, oh no, it wasn't the stunt double? Uh, no, no, it was uh, It was a scene where we, there was two of us fighting him and I, I was fighting a sword and we were so tired, we were going over for 24 hours because there was no such thing as like here in America, it's 12 hours and then you're done, you know? And we were tired and um, I he didn't dock and I he was supposed to dock and I did and hit him in the head and they sent him to the doctor and he and they put a double in for him and yeah. you could see yeah, yeah, yeah. it's obviously <laughs> this is not Richard Norton Richard Norton changed into a Chinese guy yeah much shorter Chinese but, guy with the <laughs> but but then he came back with his head stitched fighting again you know so he, you know yeah. they didn't even say hey we're gonna stop shooting they're like yeah stitch him up you're fine come on back but you know accidents happen like that when you're you're just so so tired you know shanghai express is the same way we shot uh for days and samuel would just say just go home take a shower and come back you know and he'd go oh there's an empty bedroom in here sleep mm -hmm. there you know and i i remember so many times like the makeup person coming over to me going don't sleep don't sleep you're gonna get dark circles under your eyes or something <laughs> i don't care I don't care what my eyes look now. I'm so tired. Oh, it's know? so Hong and Kong. I know. And could you imagine being so exhausted and then you've got to do one of those epic fight scenes? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And don't so, yeah. yeah, don't don't lay down. You'll get ugly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and you're, you're like, I don't care. I could look ugly right now. <laughs> I don't want to die. Were there any uh uh were there any injuries on um Shanghai Express, Millionaires Express? Uh were there any injuries? Uh I think well, what I remember is right before I did that movie, I blew up my knee. I went back to America and I was at my school and I was doing a jumping, uh, spinning hook kick. And when I landed, my knee gave out and I blew it up to the ACL. So I went there and I remember I met Richard. That's why I thought it was, I just met Richard then. And I said, oh my God, I said, I have a, a bad knee. I, I'm afraid to tell Samo. And he just came off a Philippine movie where he got cut on a rock in the jungle and it uh, it got so infected. He had it drain like three, four times and he couldn't walk on it. We're like, oh great, we have to tell Samo his, his actors are hurt. So um, we were hurt to begin with, but you know, you couldn't tell we pulled it off good, but uh, I don't, Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I someone did get hurt really bad on that. I, mean, I as I think about it, it's the scene in Machine Express where all the horses come in and we come in in a row, uh, and that that was really that. This was this was a very scary scene because uh, the day before we we got there, they got these old race horses for us to go, and the horse that they had for me was really big. It was the biggest horse, and I'm like, I'm the smallest person here. I have the biggest horse, and then it started bucking up right? Like high. So I'm like really high. I was like, oh my God, because I'm not, I didn't ride horses. So they took me down. They said, okay, well, we'll bring a smaller horse in for you. Well, they all practiced on their horses and my horse never came. So the next day we're shooting and then they come in. I don't get to practice, but I have a smaller horse. And uh, now the, the other horses kept kicking it. They didn't like it. And I'm like, oh my God. And I remember Samuel saying, okay, we have so many guys on horses 
and they put these fans in the back and they put all the sand in because they wanted it to look like here's a big sandstorm and all of a sudden the horses are coming through the sand it goes don't fall off because if anybody falls off you're going to get trampled on one of the stuntmen fell off got trampled on got hurt really really bad and um when we got to the fans it felt like someone took a big handful of sand and threw it right in your eye and you couldn't see so nobody's eyes are open nobody knows where they're going the horses have sand in their eyes everybody ended up in different positions and then they ended up like just with a lit they said they reshot it just with a little bit of sand and then we come in you know for like a scene that's like maybe 10 seconds in the movie <laughs> yeah that's like that, that man got got completely trampled on by the horses because nobody could see and they're all moving through the sand oh, and all I can remember is don't fall off, don't fall off. And you know, when your eyes are closed, your equilibrium is off. So I was just on the horse going like this. And I'm like, my eyes are closed. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just like, don't fall off, don't fall off, don't fall off. But so easily, you know, one of the actors could have fell off and you could have been killed very easily. Horse could have stomped on your head. And, and what happened to the stuntman that got trampled? And do you know who it was? Uh, no, I didn't. He, they had a lot of people there as extras. And he was one of the actors. I think it, he, he broke it, his legs. It went, they ran over his legs or something. Yeah. Jeez. And then there were, uh, a stunt man uh, got hurt really bad when we were doing um, Lady Reporter in that big net scene. Yeah, he, he the rope broke and he fell on top of the car. He got yeah. paralyzed yeah. for life. You mentioned himself. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like it's 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 dangerous i always used to say to people you know if you do hong kong movies you got to be a little crazy in the head <laughs> man but, you know i am so you know <laughs> and i think that's yeah. why i was successful because i didn't complain you know i um sometimes like i got hit in the nose with a chain my eyes started tearing because i couldn't help it but you know i was just a player you know that's your job you go in and you, you know you do the best and i thought that's how all movies were you know, I didn't know, like an American movie, they don't want you to do that kind of stuff. You know, they're like, no, even if you want to, they're like, no, we're bringing in a double. <laughs> do you think that that's being crazy? Or do you think that, I mean, is, where's the dividing line here? You know, you can yeah. be crazy, or you could be an adventure seeker. At some yeah. point, you cross over. <laughs> it is crazy. I mean, it really is crazy, because you're putting people in danger, you know, uh, like, like doing this stuff. But uh, that wasn't really on the mind of uh, the stunt coordinators. You know, they just wanted you to do the the best stunt that you could and do it as much as you could do it. You know, so they didn't have to use a double. And um, I guess they just had confidence that you you, you wouldn't mess up. You know. <laughs> uh, Silvani. Silvani uh, Magnavo or Magnavo asks, was Benny, the Jet Rakita, as I assume, brought into martial, uh, into martial law because he could keep up with your Hong Kong speed and hard contact? Um, I think, I don't know. I don't think that's the reason why he's brought in. I think he was brought in because he had done some movies before and he was very known in the martial art world, Benny, the Jet Rakitas, uh, you know, champion fighter. And because his techniques were so good. Yeah, no, it wasn't because oh he can he can keep up with you. It's just that he was a, a very uh good martial artist that that uh had had done movies, so they knew that he you know he knew how to act mm. on film. Uh let's see, Recursion Cafe asks, uh, what are some red flags you've seen in action directors or fellow stunt actors? Red um flags. yeah, uh I I I think um one of the things that I don't like is sometimes you're fighting with someone that has an ego, you know, and uh, they, well, like I've had like, like some people like that I fought with that weren't really that good to fight with. And they're like, oh, I don't want to get hit by a girl, you know, like that. They had that kind of ego. Or then you get the person that really doesn't have control and they hit you. You know, uh, you know, I've had people like you'd put a pad on and they'd hit me everywhere. There wasn't a pad. <laughs> the pad is like right here. You need to hit here. Uh, I think that that's kind of like a red flag. Uh, I've been in films where uh, I remember we were shooting. I think it was called Guardian Angel and Richard Norton was the stunt coordinator. And the guy I was supposed to fight had no martial art experience. But when he went in uh, to audition, he knew one kick, crescent kick. And he could do it fast and good. And he did it to them. And he he bullshitted his way, saying he was a big fighter. 
And he came in and Richard's going, oh my God, you're not going to want to fight him. He knows nothing, you know? So, you know, if I would have saw that, that would have been a red flag. So a lot of times, like, you know, I'm like, when I was doing the martial uh, art kid, I didn't know any of the fighters. And I was like, does someone check and make sure that they really know how to fight? You know, uh, because it's it's so important, you know, you know how it is, right? You, you know, and and sometimes we have to fight with actors that aren't martial artists, but, you know, we have the control. We're not going to go and hit them. You know, I mean, like, I think, I don't know who it was. I think it was, it was David Carradine and, and was it Chuck Norris? Were they in a film yep. together? Yep. yep. I, th I think David hit Chuck in the nose or something. Someone, there was someone hit someone in the nose, you know, it's probably David hit Chuck, would have been Chuck, but you know, like, you know, you got to watch out for that because, uh, you know, the actor, whoever's the lead actor is could get you fired. You're never going to work again with that company, you know? So I think that that's definitely a big red flag is if you boast that you, you can do these things and you get on set and you can't. Yeah. Unfortunately, the business is full of a lot of people like that who see big money signs and they figure out one kick in the mirror, like you said, and that's their their audition. Kick. Yeah. And, and for a while, everybody was a, a world champion. You know, it's yeah. like, you yeah. know, like you're, you're not a world champion. You can't, you know, how could you be a Taekwondo champion? You can't even kick. Right. You know, like things like that. But it was like maybe someone won this little tournament right. where, you know, back in the day, there yeah. might have been two competitors or, you know, and or one competitor and you won. So, OK, I'm the world champion, you know, and that like I remember like like uh, like action directors or, or or just producers say, yeah, but they're the world champion. <laughs> yes. Yeah, says who, you know, and they just go by that, you know, and I just remember for a long time, everybody was like a world champion. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You just never know. Yeah. Like you said, it's like an international film, uh, film festival. It's like, yeah, that might be a local little film festival that takes submissions from anywhere. Right. So exactly. it's like, yeah. like, oh yeah, I'm yeah. hosting a world championship martial arts tournament in my small podunk town. Uh, nobody's going to come, but everyone's invited. So whoever wins <laughs> yeah. is the world champion. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've all been to tournaments like when we were like, like just starting out little kids that maybe there wasn't even someone in your division and you'd end up getting a first place trophy. <laughs> uh, Art School Dropouts uh, asks, hey there, how has production been going for Black Creek? We did talk a little bit oh. about your pre-production. Uh, I thought uh, Art School Dropout, I thought you were talking to me because I was an Art School Dropout. Oh, you got you guys should talk. You have a lot. And I was of like, how did you know that? That's what I thought. I thought I was like, how did you know that? A lot to talk uh, about that. Yeah. Uh, so what was the question? Because you got me on the art school. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the that's the name that they go by. So they're an indie yeah. action, uh, indie action group. Um, how huh. has production been going for Black Creek? Oh, oh, it's going really good. Uh, we uh, we are uh, ready to, sh you know, to shoot. We're just uh, tying in all the loose ends, like getting, uh, you know, everybody uh, together. But uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're uh, shooting October 30th. So um you know, still doing a little tweaks here and there and changing some of the characters a little bit, but uh, it's going really great. I'm really excited about it. Again, I'm really nervous. And again, you know, we talked about that challenge. You know, this is a big challenge for me to do my own movie. You know, uh, it's so much work. And then then you go in and you're acting in it, you know, and you have all this other stuff, like, you know, you're in charge of all the other stuff. But, you know, uh, I wanted to do it. I've always wanted to do my own film. And, um, you know, and like I said, you just gotta, you know, we always have fears in life and, and, and I think that's what makes us stronger, you know? So, you know, you, you've got, it's hard, but you've got to say to yourself, yeah, I'm going to embrace this. I'm going to embrace this, but, uh, yeah, I have some stressful days and things like, how's it going to go? Or, you know, our first three days of shooting is very, very big. It's our biggest days uh the first three days and usually people start off the first day slow you know because the crew and the cast and everybody's just starting to get familiar with everything but we start right off with a big big uh big uh bang we have like like uh like a lot of people on set that day i think we have 150 people on set the first day it's huge it's yeah production yeah when, when you say that you're uh that you're you know you're you're worried, right? Let's say you're, 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 you're concerned about this. What do you, what's the voice in your head? Is it that you're afraid that the product won't look good? Is it that maybe that, you know, won't, it won't make money? Like what is your main concern? 
Um, I, I guess, you know, it, that the product, the, the movie comes out how I envision it in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have this idea, you know, you have your cast, you have your director, but then again, when you get on set, you know, is there going to be a problem, you know, with something, you know, maybe, oh my gosh, the generator is not working, you know, what do we do, you know, uh, you know, just like, you know, technical problems or stuff like usually that we would have no concern. Well, you probably would because you did your own movie, but you know, things like that, I would never really pay attention to. I would just go in, do my part, that's it. But now I have to worry about everything. And I think, I guess it, I think it's, I know it's going to be a very good movie. Uh, I know our action is going to be phenomenal. I know our lighting is going to be good. Uh, you know, the director has the same vision. So I'm just hoping that there's no unforeseen problems like, you know, hopefully everybody is safe, nobody gets hurt, you know, and uh, we really have like a strong gun control, you know, and, and good idea. You know, yeah, we have horses, but we have a lot of good stunts and things like that. So, you know, I guess, you know, it, it'll be one of those things like on the day it's over. <laughs> right. yeah. I did it. Yeah. And your, and your wardrobe is going to be on point. We know that. Everybody's is. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's wardrobe is going to be on point. I mean, yours and the whole production. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like the main characters were really, uh, we ba basically uh, drew up a, a vision of what we thought they would look like. We did a lot of research and, and stuff. And it's kind of like in a way, I wouldn't say it's like a John Wick movie, but it's kind of like, you know, has a little bit of that, uh, that unsurrealism, mm -hmm. you know, to it, like the characters, you know, the way they look and, you know, uh, like larger than life a little bit, you know. So I'm, I, I'm hoping we pull that off a little bit. So it's, you know, we're, we're on a small budget, but <laughs> if we had the money for that, it would be awesome. But again, that's another thing is, you know, I, I, I want so much for this movie and we're working with a very small budget. Yeah. Uh, when you're doing the design process for coming up with characters, do you have a concept design artist who sketches out a character for you? What is that process for you? Uh, right now, uh, my partner and I have basically kind of, uh, looked at like different things, like looked at characters, looked at, uh, people from the West, did the AI, you know, what would someone look like? What would they wear like this? And kind of come together like with an outfit and like some of them we are matching and some of them I have to get a tailor to, to do it. But we kind of came up with that kind of look already and when we showed that look to the different characters in the movie they all loved it not one person said oh i don't like it they were like yeah yeah that's awesome you know so the like the look is going to be moody you know uh like we have a lot of night shooting with torches and you know night lighting so we're, we're kind of going for that kind of muddled kind of uh, atmosphere look i'm excited to see that uh, yeah, and a lot of people said, why are you doing it at nighttime, you know, because we have it, but that's just how we wrote it, because it's a lot harder to shoot at night, because you got to have a lot more light, and, you know, uh, but, uh, yeah, we did not look look for the easiest, uh, cheapest way out on this movie, we actually went the extreme, you know, and uh, I think the reason for that is it's my first movie, and, and I, I want people to be proud of it that's in it, and I want people that watch it, like, really, really like it. JJ Hayden again asks, um, he says he's seen photos of you at seminars with Won Jin, Kim Won Jin, and the late uh, Zhang Yildo, Bruce Lai. Uh, they were both in Hong Kong in the early 90s. And uh, did you get to meet them back then or later? Um, I met them in Hong Kong. Mm. Yeah. Uh, actually, when I left Hong Kong, I really didn't see too many people, you know, uh, other than the the Americans that were over there that maybe most of them became my friends and I still see them today, but pretty much when, when I, I left Hong Kong, I didn't see a lot of the, the Hong Kong uh, actors. I'd love to, I'd love to see them, but you know, our paths have never crossed again. Did you ever work with Kim Won Jin? No, no. I don't think so. Hmm. Uh, Shin Batman 84 asks, would you consider working with, uh, Jalal Merhi again. You both worked well together in the Tiger Claw films, and he's hoping for a Tiger Claw four. Yeah, yeah, that would uh, that would uh, I would love to do that. I know Jalal is back, like doing things. I think if he he came up with a a, a 
a, a tiger claw four and just made it like more modern now it, it would be great you know because uh people love those tiger claw trilogies you know and it actually was a very good concept back then and it's kind of like you know i would love to do a china o'brien three uh but it's very hard to get the rights no, nobody wants to give up the rights to do it and you can't you know, you can't just do it. You have to buy the rights. So uh, I think for all those movies, you know, for how technology has changed and, uh, you know, the the fighting styles and stuff that you could take any of those and make a sequel and, and just make it more gritty and, you know, uh, more advanced than what it was back then. Yeah, we maybe we're, I don't know, what is that do you think about this time period where we're more open to gritty action films. Do you think that, um, is this something that people just want more of? Is it something that productions just prefer doing? What's your read on it? Um, well, the interesting thing is, is that I think in a way it's good, in a way it isn't. I think nowadays, a lot of the film, we have too many CGIs. And I think, you know, even though those, movies that we did 30 years ago, 25 years ago, if you still look at them today, the fight scenes are, are still phenomenal. And back then you didn't have CGI. You didn't have a double that had a mask that looked exactly like you. You know, you're doing pretty much, you know, 90% of your, your own work. And now, and, and I remember once Don Wilson said something to me, he says, you know, Cynthia, we make successful movies on a shoestring budget. I mean, can you imagine if we had like $150 million to do a movie, what that would look like? You know, and it always stuck in my head that, you know, these movies are are so small compared to big studio films, but people like them and they hold, you know, interest, you know, and, and to me today, some of the day, some of the movies I like, some I don't, but I think that sometimes there's too much CGI and, and I, you know, being a martial artist like you, I could always tell when there's a double, you know, and, uh, you know, I think those movies, it was really the, 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 the people fighting were really the, you know, the actors doing most of the stuff nowadays, you know, they could train someone for like one month or something and stick them in there and then have a double that looks just like them, you know, and yeah. can fool some people, but uh, not people that really know action. Yeah. And I think, I mean, there is somewhat of a trend going on right now. Uh, interestingly, it's with actors like Keanu Reeves and, Tom Cruise, who are doing all their own stunts, yeah. and it's kind of difficult. And I, it's kind of difficult to find a young action star who, who will do their own stunts. Whether that's a limitation on their side or production won't allow it, I, who knows why yeah. exactly. But I, I find it strange that, um, you know, Tom Cruise. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, how many years, 40 years into the business now, and now he's doing his own stunts more than he used to. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what, I think, you know what it is, I think because he's, he's, a, he's an adventurer at heart, and he likes to do those kind of crazy stuff, you know, so that's why he does his own, his, his own stuff, because I think it's that same kind of thing, that inner thing, that challenge, and that uh, adrenaline, you know, some some people like that and and i think he's like one of them that's like that and uh keanu i think he 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 does have some doubles but he does do a, you know a lot of his own his own his own fighting uh, and i think that's just you know uh he just is really good at that role and studies hard and practices and you know he knows you know he started studying some martial arts and things like that but i don't think you'd see uh keanu reeves doing the things tom cruise does you know flying the planes and no but yeah it's, it's sky diving a, and yeah. doing all, all those those things he does i mean he's just a different kind of action star um yeah and uh, i mean when you when you watch films like there's the john wick series mission impossible series whatever it might be do you think that that this is an encouraging sign for the action industry? I don't No, I don't think it's an encouraging sign. I think you just are going to have actors that will do that stuff and you'll have actors that won't, you know, and um, I think if Tom Cruise, you know, had doubles to do his thing and you couldn't really tell people would still like that movie but i think he just you know people are more impressed with him that you know he's what 60 and he's doing all that stuff it's it, it to me it's an inspiration for people you know because a lot of people get stuck in the age thing you know and you look you look at that you know and uh 
it's, uh, you know, you don't have to stop doing this kind of stuff just because you're getting older. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he's got the money to afford good doctors too. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's probably not too concerned about I that. I do. I do think though, you know, they have really good safety precautions yeah, it's yeah. for him, you know, yeah. like if something did happen, like, yeah, not like Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he, he does kind of take the approach, which is the one that you're taking, which is he produces his films. Uh, yeah. So he crafts action for himself. And yeah. when you, when you have, I mean, I guess you, you kind of need to know what you look like on a canvas to do that. But then once you have that, then you can, then you know what brushes to bring in. And that's basically what you're doing now. Correct. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, DL uh, McDonald asks, I've often speculated, but uh, why was Cynthia given the short haircut in the Hong Kong movies? Uh, was it so that they could easily hide the wig of the doubles? No, it wasn't. Uh, um, I was competing during some of those and, and I had really short hair to compete because the hair would get in my eyes. So I kept it, it short. Uh, and then it gets through a certain stage where it doesn't look so good. And either you got to push through it till it gets longer to look better or you go, oh, I'm cutting it short again. But no, no, that had had nothing to do with uh, with that. They didn't care. They didn't care if you had short hair, long hair, whatever. The doubles was was going to look identical anyway. Well, you're still going to look like a Chinese man. Yeah, they never quite got that right, did they? Uh, no, you know, and I don't really think they cared. You know, I really, <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> huh. what, what, when they would, when they would double you or anybody, you know, I'm watching, uh, I'm watching the end of Writing Wrongs, and there's the part where you roll down. Uh, there's this, there's this like scaffolding on its side, and your the, the stunt double rolls down. It's so obvious. I think even on a VHS on a TV this small, you could have seen that this double is not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you know what? I think maybe their mentality is, yeah, it's it's a it's a double, but this is a great stunt, so it doesn't matter who's doing it. It's good, you know, uh, because yeah, they really didn't put a whole lot into it. I remember, you know, like Richard Norton when he had the double, his hair was blonde, and they did, they kept it black. They didn't even like get a wig or anything just put it put it on uh, he's got big uh, black eyebrows now and stuff and, and i've had that too happen to me you know it's like oh it's a short chinese guy's here let's just put a little spray on it you know um that yeah i guess that's the part they never got right is is making like the the doubles look like but i don't really even think they care yeah. i really really don't what was their attitude on set when they would do this were they just kind of cavalier about it and yeah, don't worry about it. Just do the stunt. What, what was the attitude like? I, I mean, I it was it wasn't even it was just like let's set up this incredible stunt and and do it. And then they do it, and they're like, yeah, good, okay, moving on. I mean, nobody really cared. I don't think about the look. You know, we we I'd go, whoa, oh, that guy is <laughs> he's got bigger shoulders than me, and you know, uh, skin color is different. But you know, they didn't care. It's like, well. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 they, they do come from an opera system where, um, you know, the, the Don character, which is the male, the female impersonator role. I mean, there's, this is a very traditional kind of theatrical yeah. mode anyway. So maybe to them, it's just like, yeah, of course, you know, we're going to pretend to be women. Yeah. Of course it doesn't look like a woman. Yeah. What are you crazy? <laughs> and you know, what's funny in the whole history of me doing Hong Kong movies, which I did like, I think like eight of them. I've never seen a female stunt double ever. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, never. Well, why do you think that is? And did you ever get uh, wind of why? I don't think they, they've had women that could do that kind of stunt stuff. I mean, there weren't even a whole lot. Like when I first went to Hong Kong, uh, this is before I did movies, you know, I went with my uh, Kung Fu teacher and I was like, oh, wow, this is going to be like oh, Kung Fu City. You know, I want to go in all the Kung Fu shops and stuff. And I really couldn't find any, you know, it wasn't as broad as we thought it was, you know. So I I, I just, I think uh, it wasn't that there wasn't that many women probably in the martial arts schools. And if there were, they weren't trying to do film. And I, I think most of the, the women were, uh, like actors and they would just use a lot of doubles, you know, they, they liked it. If like 
some of the women were like one Miss so-and-so, Miss Hong Kong, Miss this, Miss that. And then they would all of a sudden, you know, become a star in Hong Kong. And then, then they, they would do action. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I mean, is there a, I mean, I, every now and then you would see a film with Moon Lee, for example, I can't remember her name, but there was a very, very good female uh, performer who every now and then you'd see a female performer crop up who was, yeah, yeah, do one or two lines and then could do some falls, could do this and yeah. that. But I think even then, I was the feeling perhaps that I don't know is is there some kind of feeling that they don't want to hurt <laughs> because that because the she's a woman they don't want to hurt them, but it's okay to hurt a man. It's kind of like the Titanic sinking. You know, like all the men put, you know, get get the women and children into life rafts and the men go down with the boat. Yeah. And you know what? I, I didn't feel that like when I was there. I mean, prior maybe to me shooting movies. But, you know, I mean, Corey Yoon, was, I thought was very innovative having Michelle Yeoh and I, you know, be the two leads and female cops. You know, cause they haven't seen anything like that, especially having a, a foreign woman you know, come over and fight. And I think, it, yeah, maybe they don't, because when I went over there, they didn't expect me to be such a good fighter. And they were at first being really delicate with me. Mm -hmm. And then when they saw that I could take all this stuff and I'll do whatever they said, then the attitude changes. So maybe they just, they just had this uh, impression that, you know, the, the women w w wouldn't be as tough. And then when I came along, then they're like, well, we got to have more tough women, you know? And I think I, I forget what the girl's name was. Uh, I think, um, Cynthia Khan, I know she had yeah. Yukari or something from Japan, you know, came over and, you know, then they started looking for other women because they were like, wow, you know, this is, this is good. The strong woman fighting, you know, people like to see it. Yeah. The stunt woman that I was talking about is Lei Fai. JJ mentioned that. Um, so do you think maybe that, I mean, does this again, I keep, I keep bringing it back to opera because Hong Kong cinema is just like one generation after, you know, Beijing and Cantonese opera. So you have sort of structures of, well, you have these kind of opera troops and there were female opera troops, but by and large, the opera troops were male and the males played all the roles. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you think that maybe this was just sort of how the troops ran and there might've just been, there, there might've been pragmatic reasons for that, but it might've just been a tradition. Yeah, it could, it could have been. It's just like, yeah, males uh, could play females or they could double females. Yeah. Like, it's weird. Like, I mean, yeah, never saw a woman stuntman. I remember when I, I came to America, it's like, oh, my God, there's a woman. And there weren't a lot of them back then either. You know, now there's a lot of women stuntmen, stunt women. You know, uh, there's, there's a lot. But back then, there really wasn't too many. Do you that I came across anyway, you know, yeah. back in, in the early 90s. Have you noticed the cultural change around that change? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, there's so many women now that, you know, it, it that uh, that uh, are in that industry, like 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 shocking numbers, how many, you know, are doing that and trying to get in movies, you know, or, you know, being uh, doing a lot of stunts, you know, and and and, and their skills are really good. You know, I'm really like I see some of the, the you know, things that they do and uh, yeah, they would have been awesome in Hong Kong to do those stunts yeah well i mean you do have a generation of people like me who are raised on films from people like you <laughs> and my <laughs> female contemporaries were watching you and and your stunt doubles by the way so yeah. <laughs> i'm pretty sure we're all thinking okay this is the whole package we want to be able to do this whole thing yeah yeah, you know, I, I I come across a lot of women, you know, when I go to like women awards things, ceremonies and stuff, you know, saying, you know, thank you for paying, paving the way for us and, and stuff because, you know, they probably all have seen my films because, yeah, okay, you want to do stunts here. Look at this this woman here, how, how she's fighting, you know, and they're like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to, you know, mm. be like her. What advice uh, would you give to women who want to become stunt women, action stars, and what pitfalls to watch out for? Yeah, I, I would say uh, get find a good stunt team to work with. That's probably the, the best way to get in it. Uh, let them teach you the stunts, and then when you can uh, handle them really well, they're the ones that actually will hire doubles. The stunt, stunt choreographer a lot of times will hire the doubles for the actors or, you know, use them as, like, you know, the the 
person that's going to fight the the actor you know so that's the best way best way to get in it uh it's very hard because if you think about it there's not a whole lot of uh still even though we've come back 30 years a lot of roles for action women you know it's still minute uh more doubling stars you know like i have a lot of friends that you know do work on Disney and stuff like that. It's not really martial art movies, but if there's a little fight scene or something there, they'll do it. Or if you you look at all the you know the Marvel movies and things like that. Mm. What are your thoughts? Then you, have, then you have to have another job, like you said, a side job. Yeah, right. What do you think that? What's your read on the uh, female-led? action business you know you're saying that there aren't there aren't many roles uh the roles that there are they tend to be in my view they tend to be a very tough female um mm -hmm. and i would i would juxtapose that to the 80s tough female and that i i don't know when i I'll, I'll probably speak for everybody right now in the chat when i watch you as a character uh i believe every moment there's something extremely believable and yeah we can see the doubling but that doesn't matter. All the other stuff is believable. And mm -hmm. that maybe sometimes uh, it's a little bit more difficult for, because as a man, you know, you still, I mean, look, I'm watching a female led action film. So I'm associating in some way with the lead. I have to be able to believe her. Right. And, and I think, again, I think everybody's gonna agree with this. Uh, I have a hard time doing that a lot of the time with modern films. I don't know why. I don't know if that's a bias on my part or what, but what is your read on the the current industry with, you know, female-led action films? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm the same with you. Uh, there's some that's really good, and it's all about being believable, you know, and, uh, you know, anybody could learn how to throw a punch just oh yeah go like that and then they could speed it up and make it look strong but it's not so much just doing the technique it's the feeling you know it doesn't come across that they're really fighting that that you know the facial that that really hit you know and i think that's what's lacking in some of the things that you that you see you know or they try to do things that uh are like unbelievable moves and if you're not that proficient even if you have a double, it just doesn't work because your character wasn't that tough and strong enough to do that. But I'm with you, you know, when I see uh, there's so there's a lot of like when you look at Netflix, you know, there's a lot of women, you know, in some of them that that are action, you know, and like I'll, sometimes I'll watch it, I'll start watching it and go, I can't watch it because it doesn't matter if it's a male or female. If it's not believable for me and the action isn't good. You know, I, I I can't watch it. You know, I can't get through it. And sometimes I try because I go, oh, yeah, it's my industry. I should be watching this. But if there's something about it, like like we were looking at one and we were trying to watch a Western and the lighting was so bad. It was so dark. You know, I was like, oh, I, I, I can't watch it. I'm really, really particular on action films and kind of ruins it for me. You know, it's like a chef. If you ever go to a restaurant with a chef. They, they're very picky. They don't like to eat just anything, you know? And I think it's the same with uh, with martial artists. You know, you you know what looks good. And maybe the average person that isn't a martial artist goes, oh, wow, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. But we see, you know, uh, they don't have the fighting spirit in them. And it's not, you know, some of them, some of them, the ones that don't work, you know, or or, you know, what drives me crazy is like the hands in a wrong position or the foot is in a wrong position. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that person just broke their foot or that's a miss or, oh, that was, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm too, too critical of, of watching it. But, you know, when I do see things like, you know, I, I, for a long time, I didn't want to go see Wonder Woman because I was like, uh huh, it's going to be another stupid, you know, action star female. And when I watched it, I was like, wow, I, I liked it. I was like, yes, you did a great job, you know? So when I do, see a good one i i really really like it and i wish we would see a lot more you know i think uh i think we don't see enough of that with the female fighters that you know they need to uh you know you see it with the men you know you know you need to see it with the women too i, I guess um because i was just thinking about that and i was trying to think of you know male-led action films that I, that i really like recently and um there might be a similar issue going on where a similar but not the same where you have yeah. you know you might have you might actually have a lead actor who is fully capable of doing all the action and they'll yeah they'll shoot very kind of plain jane and you, you see it all i mean but then the, it, it, there's this kind of caricature <laughs> character 
this caricature that they're playing. And it's not, uh, it, even, even for like a B film, you still have to buy the character. You still have to believe yeah. this guy. Yeah. And I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, call, call me cynical. I don't really see much on either side right now, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I mean, take someone like Liam Neeson. He's, okay. He's not a martial artist. But he's a good action star. People look at him as an action star because he's believable. Yeah. He's, you know, when he does it in his facial expression, of course he has doubles, but when the camera is on him, it's believable, you know? And, uh, you know, same with Jason Statham, you know, he wasn't a, a martial artist at first, you know, I'm sure he, he studied after, but he's believable because he brings in that whole persona that you can't just do a technique and say, oh, yeah, that's great. Or you get a dancer that's really flexible and you go, oh, yeah, like do all these kicks now. You're going, oh, no, that's not right. You know, I mean, I think this is why Michelle Yeoh is still a, a huge star. Yeah, because you just you believe her. Yeah. Uh, oh, she came from that the Hong Kong uh, training thing that you know you really get hit. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I have one more question here uh, from uh, Cyclone Phantom. Um, my last question. He says, uh, "What are your thoughts on Hollywood action and modern action films today?" So, a general question about modern action. You know, um, I. I like them. I think, you know, when they started bringing the Hong Kong flavor into them, you know, most of them are, like are pretty good. Like even sometimes when you have the superheroes fighting, it looks good. Uh, it, all, it, it all depends. You know, it definitely has evolved, you know, and, you know, I think when they have big budget films, they could do anything and make it, they better be making it look good if you've got a $200 million budget, you know. Uh, but it, it's, it, it's funny. It's hard to make a small film and have that impact. And that's what I'm hoping to do with Black Creek is to have that impact, even though, you know, we're on a shoestring budget to compare to the, the big studio studio mm. films that, that it is. Spe speaking of studio films, I did want to ask you, when you watch a Marvel style action scene, what do you, or, you know, DC, for example, Wonder Woman, yeah. um, what do you see when you watch action like that? And what do you look uh, for? What do I look for? Uh, well, I guess the number one thing is believability. You know, b believability. I mean, first of all, Wonder Woman was a good story. So that helped. So, you know, you have to have a good story. If you have bad action and a bad story, oh, that's the worst. You know, uh, sometimes the story will carry it along. You know, if it's a really good story and then you can kind of like ignore like some of the action. But I, I just look for, uh, I, I look for the wow factor. That's what I do. I, I want to see something and go, wow, maybe not for every scene, but I want to see some moves. And and it's the way, you know, it's delivered or shot. It doesn't have to be fancy. I don't like it, you know, when everybody does the same. I'll tell you one of the moves I don't like is, you know, you keep, you know, where people do the same kind of flipping down on one knee and then they scream for like five minutes. I don't like that. You know, I think they got that from a competition and then they put it in. That's not real. You won't do it. I like to see mm -hmm. things that, that are real and if you're going to do something really fancy make sure it it really looks like it's going to hurt yeah i you know who i just interviewed today was uh mars from jackie chan's stunt team and and he was talking about how when they were designing action in the early 80s they had this sort of similar sentiment that we don't want to make action that's very shape and shapely and posy and that's when they created this jackie chan style of action where it was just as fast as possible flurry don't even worry about what the movements are make it believable start with the character okay these characters don't really know how to fight and they're they're miscreants right or maybe they kind of know how to fight but how would they fight yeah, <laughs> how right. would they fight and uh then you get the jackie chan stunt team style of action out of that um cynthia thank you so much for yeah, talking to us um taking questions from the fans uh that was very rewarding can't wait to see your film uh oh thank you well yeah you okay uh, you're where are you you're uh las vegas las vegas we're gonna have a big premiere in las vegas you are okay oh, yeah black belt magazine is sponsoring a premiere in las vegas and one in la for us oh great when is the premiere in las vegas uh they want to have it somewhere march or april okay. so we'll see how it goes
right? That's that. If they, you know, I think we'll be re we'll be ready by March. Okay. Well, uh, I hope your shoot goes well. Uh, Thank you so much. Don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always afraid, but if I wasn't, then there'd be something wrong. That's you know, true. I always, I always like, like that little, you know, you know, a, a, a gentleman and, and, and I don't know, it, it it's kind of what makes me tick, you right. know, if, if I, if I, if I, if it's just like, ah, oh, I'm just coming in and blah, 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 you know, but I always kind of like what it psych myself up for fighting and get into that, that frame of mind that, you know, you're, you're, you know, when I'm doing movies and I, like I just did this movie, Lady Scorpions, you know, I mean, you have to really feel like you're fighting, you know, you can't, you can't feel like I'm just doing movements, you know, you've got to, you know, even if you're doing the movements good, you've got to, you, mentally, you have to feel like this is really happening and you're really fighting. And if that's really happening, you're going to have adrenaline and you're going to, you know, be a little bit tense, you know, you're not going to be relaxed, you know, so it works for me. <laughs> okay, well, it keeps your edge, so that's good. All right. Thank you again, Cynthia. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye, bye everybody. everybody. Thank you.